So we're going to be talking about Amazon and their push into retail. So I'm actually really excited about this topic. Um, so one sec, let me just uh, see if we can change our sound preferences here. Here we go. All right. So um, can everybody on the phone line hear me? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So the microphone is working. That's fabulous. Um, and let's just make sure, yep, we got our Facebook going. I'm going to get our recording started and I will be right back. So, um, this is actually a really, really timely topic and I chose it specifically because of the Amazon bid that's going on and, um, some of the, the scuttlebutt about it and we want to kind of do a little myth busting as well as, say what does this mean for you as a seller and whether you're selling to them as they're buying it into their distribution center or you are using their fulfilled by Amazon services. Um, there's some changes and things that are probably gonna come down. So um, it's a really, really fun time. And let's see, we should have a webcast going. Hmm, okay. One second, everybody. It looks like our webcast is uh, has not started up. That's okay. We're going to stick with a Facebook Live and the the phone for this uh, part. So, hi everybody. Um, all the lines are open right now. Who's on the line? Wants to say hello. Where you're calling from? Hello, Amy. New York. Awesome. We got New York. Who else? Hey, Giuseppe, I thought I recognized your phone number. Welcome. Yeah. Bill in Los Angeles. Bill, hey, hi. Hey. I see we've got some people out of Syracuse. We've got Northern California, Florida. Uh, looks like Canada. And it looks like we may have Germany and France as well. So um, I'm going to put everybody's line on mute real quick here. Um, so hi, I'm Amy Wenslow. If you've never been on this before, this is the Product Business Show. And I host this every other Monday from 11 to approximately 11.30 Pacific time. Sometimes we do run a little bit longer if it's... Uh, really active. So I see we've got a bunch of people coming in on Facebook. So on the Facebook Live, if somebody could type a comment, say hello, so I can um, acknowledge all of you. I'd appreciate that. And I just want to say what we're going to do here today is I'm going to do about 15 minutes of content. It might be a little more because all the, the Amazon things are so top of mind for a lot of people in the product world. And then I'm going to definitely be leaving um, and I'm going to be leaving some time for questions. And I just got a, a note that the webcast seems to be down. So one second here. Um, huh. Okay, one, one sec, everybody. Um, So let me just let them know to uh, go over to Facebook Live. Okay, there we go. So um, Amazon has done something that many, many, many people are shocked about. And we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna talk about why it isn't such a surprise and what it means for the rest of the retail community. So, um, I'm not an attorney, so when you, if you ask questions, if you have something that varies, that goes towards the legal side, um, I'll ask that you consult your attorney. And um, so the, um, sorry, I'm getting all kinds of messages popping up. So um, if you have a legal question that really should be uh, addressed to an attorney, we're gonna definitely guide you through that and this one is really going to be focused more on the future of retailing and the future of product sales. So it's a very, very important conversation, which is why I ask that if you know people, um, that you forwarded that email to them because there are some things that are going to shake out 
really soon. And if this Amazon deal goes through, it's, it's going to lead to a lot of change. So all of that said, welcome everybody. I know we've got some new subscribers that are joining us. I can see we've got a bunch of people on the phone line and we've got Facebook Live going, so here we go. Amazon's push into brick and mortar retail. Now, this is not so surprising if you think about it in the context of our conversation from a couple weeks ago about e-commerce and the fact that at this point still about 87% of sales are happening offline, right? So let's just lay the, the groundwork here. If 87% of sales overall are happening offline, that means that there's a lot of money still to be made in offline, correct? Well, Amazon is the number one retailer on you know, e-tail, right? They're the number one e-commerce um, retailer. So they're sitting there and they're going, okay, we've got the lion's share of this 13% of all sales. How on earth do we get into this 87% that's happening offline, okay? So it makes sense that they would look to acquire some brick and mortar stores or some brick and mortar locations. They tried that with the Amazon Locker program. It's met with some mixed success and you know people are a little slow to adopt it. And the reality is that the fastest way for Amazon to build out a lot of locations quickly is to buy somebody. So that's the landscape that has led to a purchase offer of $13.7 billion for Whole Foods. Now, some people are kind of questioning this. It is the largest acquisition bid that Amazon has ever put out for any business, okay? By far, it, it, it's like the Samson, it's enormous, right? So $13.7 billion. Now the way that they're doing this is it's a cash offer. They're offering 42 cents a share for Whole Foods stock and that 40, sorry, not 42 cents, $42 per share for Whole Foods stock. That's at a 27% premium over its last trading pr price from before the offer, okay? So they are offering to buy a ton of, of stock of Whole Foods at $42 a share, which is going to make a lot of people a bunch of money. So, um, People have kind of asked, why would Whole Foods do this, right? Why would Whole Foods sell? Well, many people also aren't tracking Whole Foods sales. Whole Foods has had about seven straight quarters of flat store sales, meaning it's not increasing same store sales. So retailers track their growth by, are they getting more people in the store to buy more items? So store sales year over year or quarter over quarter. Whole Foods hasn't been growing as fast as their investors would like. It's been pretty flat for seven quarters prior to this purchase offer. And then one of their investors was Jana Partners. And Jana Partners was really agitating the rest of the board and the shareholders to get rid of the CEO, John Mackey, and bring in new management and make some changes. They were really pushing for a lot of change. Well, the CEO really wants to say, he, it's his thing, he founded it, he, he talks about it like it's his baby, okay? So given that he wants to stay and one of his major investors wants something new to happen, it kind of put him in a vulnerable position, all right? So there you go, there's the, the background of it. Um, so let's look at why Amazon would do this. Like what's, what does it give them? And what does it give Whole Foods, okay? So the what it gives Whole Foods is it lets John Mackey stay, it gives Jana Partners some sort of upside and some movement, and it also reinvigorates their logistics because Amazon is for sure gonna change technology systems inside the business and move the, the distribution stream. They're very good at distribution. Okay, so that's the whole food side. Let's now jump into what Amazon is gonna be doing. So they're the number one e-tailer. 
They're known as a logistics and distribution company. Make no mistake about it, they are a sales platform. And if you're at all wondering about that, here are the statistics. Um, they've done approximately uh, $46 billion last year in revenue. And 50% of that was for seller services. So 50% of Amazon's revenue comes from them selling their products that they buy in and sell. Right? But another 50% almost comes from their fulfilled by Amazon services and all of these other things that they do to support sellers on their platform, right? All those extra fees you pay, yeah, that adds up to over $22 billion, almost $23 billion last year. And that was a $6 billion increase over 2015. So it's a huge, huge game that they're playing in the distribution world. Now, so why would they do this deal with Whole Foods? Well, they've been thinking about it for a long time. They looked at it last fall and didn't do it. Um, they get to add 466 physical locations in one fell swoop, okay? They have staff that they can acquire. They have um, brand equity that's enormous. Whole Foods is a well-known brand. Uh, it's a premium brand too, which is a little surprising to people. It is the most upscale brand that Amazon has, has acquired to date. Um, and the deal hasn't even gone through, right? So um, they get to add these locations really fast. So they're paying for speed and infrastructure and brand equity, okay? Now, they're also gonna get distribution centers vendor relationships, vendors that may not have been selling on Amazon. Um, they're also going to get a social brand added to their portfolio. So a socially conscious brand even. Um, organic, natural, um, some um, cachet to it that Amazon has not typically had, okay? And the biggest one of all, the absolute biggest reason that they chose a Whole Foods grocery store over anything else is this. Groceries are a consumable product. That equals recurring revenue. That's why Amazon pushed into the Amazon Fresh, and that's why they push into the grocery category, and that's the reason for the reorder buttons and all kinds of things is because it's recurring revenue. They get you into a cycle and our psychology as human beings is that we will go with what is most comfortable and most convenient and that we feel safest with. So if they get you in a pattern of buying with them, you'll continue it, okay? So it's going to give them access to this 87% of offline sales, plus it's gonna give them physical footprint. I can very easily see um, a whole ton of permutations on retailing that they're gonna do. So there you go, there's the quick rundown. Um, let's talk about outcomes that you can expect to see from this. Um, if you've been watching retailing and sales of products at all, um, you'll have heard the channel, the, the word omni-channel. Omni-channel is the idea of being seen everywhere, every sales channel. So that means that you would have online, you'd have offline, you'd, you might have TV shopping channel, and omni-channel um, sales and omni-channel marketing means that you're seen in, from a marketing standpoint, you'd be seen in social media, you'd be seen on television, you'd be seen in news, and you'd be seen in print, and you'd be seen in circulars, and you'd be in people's email inbox. That's omni-channel marketing, okay? Being everywhere. So here's what's gonna happen with Amazon. Number one, they're gonna acquire all that physical footprint, huge. I think that they are going to take their locker concept and they're gonna put it inside the Whole Foods locations, okay? Assuming that they get these. It's also gonna move their drone delivery service further down the pipeline. Okay, so they're already testing drone delivery. They did their first drone delivery of a package uh, in December, and the drone delivery program is gonna be for, for um, things under five pounds, right? And it'll be delivered to your door, click to at your house, 
or your office in 30 minutes. Yeah, and you haven't even left. So literally, if you were doing a dinner party and you lost an ingredient or you can't find it, you could get it delivered to you while you're finishing cooking the rest of the meal. Crazy but true. So the, the drone delivery would be greatly enhanced by having physical locations, right? They could have the drones in more cities even. So um, it's pretty intriguing. Now, the other thing that a lot of people haven't really thought about is the fact that Amazon has 10 years worth of data analytics on how consumers buy. You know, what we buy with what. You know, we look at this thing and then we buy that thing, or you know, we, we look at these three things together and then we choose, right? So they have a massive amount of data on how consumers are purchasing, at least online, right? They're going to be testing new merchandising strategies. I bet that there is going to be new um, adjacent displays going on. You know, this thing next to that thing or suggestive selling is going to be taken to a whole new level inside retail. Um, it should be really, really fascinating from a merchandising standpoint to see how they put together the planograms, which are the, the plans of the stores. Okay, We've got a lot of experience in this, so I'm really watching what Amazon is doing with this move. Now, the other thing, last point before we take some questions here is this. The Amazon deal for Whole Foods is not complete. It's not a, a forgiven, foregone conclusion and it's going to go through. But it's being talked about like it is. Okay, I even slipped into it. It is a bid. And as of just a couple days ago, Amazon has said that if Whole Foods were to start a bidding war, meaning uh, go court some other purchaser, they will withdraw their offer. So they're holding Amazon, sorry, Amazon is holding Whole Foods in this deal with a, look, you want this deal? Cool, let's do it. You want to mess around and go look for somebody else that can give you an extra $3 per share? We're out, okay? So that's coming from a place of many, many um, stock analysts and business analysts are saying that the $42 per share was not quite high enough and that there's a lot more brand equity that they feel Whole Foods isn't going to get full value for, okay? So they feel more like the share price should have been up around $45 or $46 instead of $42. So it's kind of an intriguing thing. Um, they're playing a little bit of a game of chicken um, with Whole Foods and Amazon. They're, Amazon is playing chicken with Whole Foods. Um, so with that, I'm going to open this up and we can talk about a little bit more about what this means for you as a seller. Um, there's a lot more we can say. So I wanted to make sure that we uh, cover questions though. So with that, uh, if you're on the phone line and you want to ask a question, press uh, star two and that'll raise your hand so that I know you've got a question. And then on Facebook, you can just um, type it in there and we'll go ahead and, and take those. Um, so let's move on to how, what it's going to mean for sellers, okay? Now, sellers, your fees are accounting for, like I said, about 50% of Amazon's revenue. Most retailers are already using their e-commerce sites to vet ideas, vet products, test them out before they put them in a store anyway. You're going to see more of that. Okay, Amazon will take whatever brick and mortar they buy and they're going to use that as a place to put all the premium products that do really, really well in their online model to see if they can push them over to brick and mortar. Okay, um, They're going to use it as a drone platform for sure. The Amazon Locker concept will probably get some version um, morph put into it. And then I think that there's also going to be some really intriguing things that they do with their seller services. Wouldn't surprise me to see them put in a boutique section that is kind of a, a featured sellers area in the actual brick and mortar. Yeah, Whole Foods has um, really tried to maintain a socially conscious, environmentally aware footprint and, and brand and 
that's the biggest concern from the whole food side, whole foods side of things is that the brand equity will get diluted and the people's perception of the brand will get affected. So um, I think the seller services and doing some kiosks or boutiques inside the Whole Foods will be very intriguing for Amazon. Amazon has recently added um, several people to their board and their executive team that have very deep retail backgrounds. So um, they're gonna definitely be tapping that expertise to bring it in. Um, so grocery makes perfect sense. It's recurring revenue for them. Great footprint, good brand equity, and slightly struggling because of the uh, store sales not increasing. So I see we've got a question from Georgia, it looks like. The phone number ends in 9606. Hey there, hi, who's this? Hello? Um, let's see, the phone number is nine, there we Hello? go. Hey, hi. Okay, did I, do you hear me? I can hear you perfectly, so can everybody else. What's your question? Okay, um, I'm from uh, Zoline Gluten-Free Delights, and it's Zoline.com, and uh, I wanted to find out about selling on Amazon they charge, uh, they have a charge for that, and I wanted to find out what do you get for that charge? Are they helping you with SEO? Do you have any familiarity with that? Sure. Um, I think this is Aline, am I right? Yes. Hi. So, um, when you... Uh, when you say selling on Amazon, do you mean selling to Amazon and they're going to sell your product? Or are you talking about fulfilled by Amazon? Uh, fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. Um, it's not so much that they handle SEO for you. Um, you get to put listings on Amazon. They will warehouse your product. They will ship it for you. Um, they will take care of returns, that kind of thing. So it's really more that they're operating as a logistics or a warehouse than anything. Does that make sense? Okay, and that's what the $39 a month is for? It's for a whole host of things. Um, there's a lot of little pieces they throw in there, so it's really best for you to read the agreement really well. Um, with Amazon, um, when you talk about SEO and Amazon, it's very different. It's your quote unquote SEO, search engine optimization for everybody, really is based on how well you can optimize your listing for your product. So can you get good keywords into it, those kinds of things. How you set up your listing is up to you, okay? Um, or if you're using a provider, there can be a service for that. Um, if you are using the fulfillment services, it's it's not really SEO the same way as like selling through your own website would be. Okay, okay, appreciate. Sure. Do you realize that they now have uh, salespeople that work with you on that? Oh, really? Yeah, um, met them at a conference just recently, mm -hmm. and we have someone that's working with us to uh, get a product online. And by the way, we're doing we're introducing uh, gluten-free flour oh. and um, and starting there on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've had people that will help you with some of the setup things, um, and that will talk to you about the service. So that's that's been there for a little while. Alrighty, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Aline, you should definitely be on the next show. Um, you should tune into it because it's going to be about the sales funnels. And a sales funnel is where you talk about how do you convert from a website visitor to a purchaser to a repeat purchaser. Okay? Oh, okay. So that'll that be. Works. Yeah, and, yeah. And the difference between trying to approach. Uh, Whole Foods and uh, Amazon at this time. I mean, I've, I've been trying to decide to go both ways, but then with the sale, pr proposed sale. Yeah. Is that? 
I would still work both angles because um, you don't know that the deal is going to go through first off. There's a ton of deals that get proposed to people that never happen. Um, but also it's going to take a little while for the supply chain to switch over even if it does go through and some of the, the buying staff shakeups that may happen are going to take a little while too. So, you know, keep going, stay the course and, and um, you stand a better chance if you've been in the store and you get good sales numbers in being able to stay in the store than try and get in once it gets really confusing and they're in the middle of whatever switchovers they do. Does that make sense? Got it. Thank you. Yeah. So get in faster. Okay. <laughs> um, there was one other point about the seller piece of this. It'll come to me. Um, did that take care of your question? Yes, it did. Thank you very much, Amy. You're welcome, Aileen. Talk to you soon. Okay, so um, if you've got a question, you're on the phone line, press star 2 to raise your hand. If you're on Facebook Live, just type it in. I am watching that. I see we've got Maurice uh, Perdreau from Per Dreams um, with us. And let's see if I can see who else is here. Nope. Um, so the the thing about Amazon and this timing of when they're going to be able to switch things, first off, because it's such a large deal, it's going to go through some regulation and some review and due diligence and all kinds of things. Um, so it's really important to keep in mind that it, it is a process. It may move pretty quickly. You know, we don't know at what point in the cycle Amazon announced this, right? Um, and it's been kind of interesting because Whole Foods really could decide that, well, you know, we don't quite like this deal. And I'm pretty sure that one of the key elements of this is going to be that John Mackey stays. Okay. If they were to get some other deal from somewhere and, um, the Whole Foods CEO was not going to be allowed to stay in a leadership position even under the New Deal. The New Deal will not work. Okay, he's going to really work to block it. But Jana Partners really wants something done, so he is under pressure that way. Um, I don't think that they will move right away into a clothing retailer. Clothing has not been a real strong category for the online sales. They may decide after looking at it though that they go, look, we have a hard time with this online because people can't try it on, because they can't do this and the you know returns are what they are. So they may actually look for a distressed clothing retailer that they can take on and take over the leases so that they can have fitting rooms and physical people and all those other things. Um, I do think that it would make sense at some point in the, the very near future for Amazon to look at doing some leases inside other stores, uh, possibly department store, and take over a section as like a Amazon boutique or um, to have customer service locations inside other retailers. So lots of ways that can go. Uh, the retail community from the brick and mortar side is pretty concerned about this and it's been a bit of a shakeup. But they've been facing the same mashup for over eight to 10 years. I mean, Walmart just bought jet.com not too long ago, um, trying to strengthen their foothold in the e-commerce side. So it's going both ways. Um, oh, I know the other piece about the sellers. There is a very big trend in Amazon sellers trying to now sell to brick and mortar retail because the, the main problem is that they don't really, really own the whole customer list. So when you sell through Amazon, um, the customer database is really still Amazon's for all practical purposes. So I was talking to a business, they've been a very successful Amazon seller for four years. They're launching their own brand and they just put up their website and are really looking at how are they gonna do this and create a, a sales funnel that makes sense. So we will be talking sales funnels next time. Um, with that, I'm gonna take a look for the phone line, press star two to raise your hand. I see we've got a whole bunch of people still uh, with us today, that's awesome. Um, but if there's no questions, we'll call it a wrap.
So star two to raise your hand. That'll let me know you've got a question on the phone line. If you've got one uh, on Facebook Live, just type it in. So um, I hope that was a, a clear breakdown of this deal for you so that you can understand it from a merchandising standpoint, a logistics standpoint. It's gonna let Amazon implement a lot of data, a lot of analytics that they've been um, wanting to do something with for a while. So with that, everybody, I think we are a wrap. It's uh, right now 11.30. Be back in two weeks. We're gonna talk sales funnels and it's all about conversions, okay? How on earth do you convert a website visitor to a purchaser and from a purchaser to a repeat purchaser? This is really important because a lot of people talk to us and the, the web experts that are around us and they go, oh, I just need more, more traffic. I need more traffic to my site. And the traffic comes and the sales just still don't come. One of the biggest gaps right now is that sales funnels are broken. Um, this is a really big deal. You heard us talk about it when I was on the e-commerce call that out of the 12 to 24 million e-commerce websites, only about 650,000 make over a thousand dollars a year. So uh, the percentages that make over a thousand dollars per year are pretty small and I'd love to have you be in them. So please come back um, two weeks. We're going to talk sales funnels. Okay. So with that, everybody, have a great rest of your week, and I'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye for now. The conference is now completed. So um, I am so glad that we had a chance to do the Facebook Live with you today. Um, Jeff, thanks for, for popping on, and Maurice, thank you for popping on, and um, you know, for whatever reason, Facebook's not letting me see everybody else who's there. So if you're uh, here and you want to say hi, I would love that. Just type something in the comments. I'll check them a little bit later. I'm going to do a blog post about this because it is such an important conversation. Um, it was a lot of numbers and business valuation kinds of conversation today. But um, it's really important for you to understand this as a business person in the product world. Okay. So Maurice, this is probably going to affect you and you should definitely be on the sales funnel uh, show. Listen in in two weeks because it's a really important piece for your website sales as well. So with that, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you soon.